Tasted This APC, and today I'm gonna teach you how to make turn based games in Game Maker. This tutorial was suggested by Thunder from MK. I can only think MK stands for Meta Knight. Probably stands something else, but anyway, Thunder from MK suggested this. Thank you for the suggestion. He suggested that I make it like a roguelike game, which I'm not exactly sure what that means, but my, my best assumption is like Civilization 3 is, the, is the, a turn based game that I can think of. And this can also be applied to different turn based games like Pokemon or. Final Fantasy as well. So, without further ado, let's get started. This requires four sprites. First one, we're going to call SPR Unit X. The gameplay in this turn based game is going to be we have three teams. Each team gets three units, and they get to move the units around by selecting them and right clicking. So, the three units are going to be nicknamed X, Y, and Z. Right now we're making unit X. Start off making it a yellow circle, which is the color of team zero. So there's gonna be team zero, team one, team three, and yes, so. And then the, the colors of the other two teams will, will be um, changed later when we're programming. So I just made a yellow circle and I'm going to put an X on top of it. Like so. And I'm going to use the same simple technique for the following units, Y and Z, and I'm just going to speed that part up. Alright, so we got our three units now. Now we're going to create another sprite. This sprite is going to be a toggle representing which team's turn it is. So we're going to call SPR turn. This is only going to be a box that, that will change colors based on whose turn it is. So team zero his team color is yellow, so I make it yellow. Next team. Next team's color is going to be red. Team 1's color is red. And team 2 is green. There. No rhyme or reason to this. I just chose the colors because they... Um, no reason. Alright. That's all for our sprites. So for objects, let's go and create a unit. A wood unit. This can be our only unit object. We're going to make him make it change around to look specific later on. But this can be our only unit object. So, in creation event, there are two variables. First variable, we call it var team. We're going to put the var in front of it, is because we're only initializing it. We don't want to give it a value. We're going to the value is going to be assigned to it later in different objects because we're going to have multiple multiple team units and they're going to have different team values. All right. So next, next is going to be a true false value of boolean. We're going to call it selected. So equal to false. This will represent whether it's selected and whether it can be moved or not. Okay, so let's decide how it gets selected. We're gonna go into the mouse, left released. So if the mouse is on top of this um, object, or the sprite of this object, and the mouse is released, left mouse is released, then this will be triggered. So what we're gonna do is if team equals global Dot turn selected equals true. All right, let me explain what this means. All right, so there's the global dot turn variable. We haven't, we haven't created it yet, but what it means is global turn is going to represent which team's turn it is. So, for instance, if global team dot, if global dot turn equals zero, then it's team zero's turn. So, if it's global dot turn equals zero and we're team zero, it's our turn, which means this can be selected. And same goes for one and two. Okay, so now we're, now we're going to set up when it's not, not selected. We want this to happen whenever you left-click away from this particular object. So, add event, mouse, global mouse, global left pressed. Alright, so the way we're going to do is to have selected equals false. There's never a scenario when, you, when this happens where it's not going to equal false. Alright, so you may have noticed that I use left released here and I use left pressed here. I did this because if you click on the player, click on the object, this one is still triggered. So I wanted to make sure that you, this one, is triggered before this one, so that you, so that um, you uh, get selected. If otherwise, it's possible that if this one gets triggered first, then it might become selected, and then immediately become unselected by this one. There's a better way of doing this, but um, in order to keep it simple, I decided to do it this way. But this isn't the best way of doing this. Alright, so the last part. If we're selected and we right click, what do we want to do? In this case, I want to move straight to wherever the mouse is. So, global mouse, right press, and 
if selected equals true, because if we're not selected, that would mean that if we're not selected, then we don't want to move. We only want to move if, if we're the selected. Okay. So the way we're gonna do this is x equals mouse x y equals mouse y. What this means is our x becomes the x position of the of the mouse, our y becomes the y position of the y. Of our y becomes the y position of the mouse. All right. So this is all the programming for our individual units. All right. So now we're going to create another object. This one's gonna be called obj term. In the creation event, we are going to initialize the variable global dot turn. You may remember that we used it earlier in the obj unit object, and it represents what which team's turn it is. And another thing we want to take care of is image speed equals zero. So the sprite we're going to use is fair turn, and we do not want to flip through those sprites continuously. We want to flip wherever we click on this object. So the way we're going to do that is go to mouse, left press, and then. So this will represent whenever we click on the object, and when that happens, we want it to um, global dot turn plus equals one. We'll, we'll um, take care of the image index later, the sub image, but we want to go to the next turn either way. Now, if you remember, there are only three possible turn values, 0, 1, and 2. And if it equals 2, we don't want to add 1, we want to go back to 0. So we're going to put down a quick um, this statement here. If global dot turn equals 2, go back to 0. So global dot turn equals 0. Otherwise, we'll just add 1. Alright, all set, and now we're going to take care of the sub-image, so in the sub-event, this can represent, this object right here is going to represent wh who's, which turn it is so we don't get confused, so at all times, image index equals global dot turn. Okay, so that's, that's all for our turn object, our unit object. Now there's one more object that we're going to create, we're going to call it OJ spawner. Alright, so what this is going to do is... Right here in this code, we're going to create all of our objects. We're, we're going to create all our units, choose where it's going to go, choose what unit it's going to be, and choose the team. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use a script it goes ser create unit. This has four arguments. The first is when we which x we want to have. Second is going to be what y we want to have. Third is going to be what team we want to be on, and the fourth is going to be which unit it's going to be. Okay, this script doesn't exist. We're going to need to create a script. Now, the point of creating scripts is so that we don't have to type down the whole same code again over and over again. But this is the way we want to format it. So I'm going to copy this so we can create the script. So we want. I'm just going to try to do comments so we can look at it. This is the form I want to have. So the script name is going to be SCR create unit because whatever you put down here for the name is the name you can refer reference it by. Works just like a function, by the way. If I didn't ever mention that yet. All right, so now let's um, summarize what we what the individual arguments are going to be. So argument zero. So this one that's going to represent what X we want the unit to be. Argument one is gonna be this second one. It's gonna represent what Y I want to have. Argument two is going to represent what team. And argument three is gonna represent which unit. Okay. I, I always like to put a comment like this at the beginning of my scripts so that I never get confused about which argue which one is which. Because within scripts there are these built-in variables called arguments. You just this argument zero that rep represents the first one, the whatever's put in this first slot, argument one, whatever's put in the second slot, and so on and so on. Alright. So, right now, we're going to create the objects R with. So, instance create. Instance create function has three arguments, the first of which is what x value you want it to have, and we want that to be whatever is in this spot, so that would be argument zero. Next one, what y, what y, what y. What, what, what y value do we want to have? 
that will be whatever's here, and that is argument one. Next, which object? It's gonna be OBJ unit every time, so OBJ unit. Alright, next. Next is the team argument, how are you gonna set what team it's on? Remember that team variable we initialized in the unit object? Well, we're going to um, set that team variable to value. So, the way we're gonna do that is first off, we need to give, give this object a name so we can refer to it. So, whatever this this is, this variable obj represents this particular object we've made. If argument uh, two equals zero, so if we want to be team zero, first off, we're gonna set obj dot team equal to zero. Second of all, we are going to make it yellow because yellow is the color of that team. We're going to make yellow is obj dot image blend so the image blend value of obj is going to be equal to the color yellow. See yellow is just a constant that you use whenever you want to make something yellow. Alright so let's copy this two times. Alright so if I can one, if we want to be team one, set team value to one and the color for team one is red so image blend equals c red. If argument two equals two, two, we want team divided by two, and the color layer for team two is green. All right, moving right along for the final, one, final fourth argument, argument three. If argument three equals zero, remember this is going to represent whether they want to be unit x, y, or z, and the way it's going to be defined is which sprite the um, uh, unit object has, which is going to be the only thing that defines which unit it is. So, obj dot sprite index, what sprite it has, is going to be equal to spr x, uh, unit x, sorry. Okay, so then we'll copy this two more times for our other two units. Equals 1, we want it to be y, if it equals 2, we want it to be Z. Alright. Okay, so that, that's all for our script. This will be run through every time we call the script you need to create. Okay. So let's go into our spawner object. Okay. So, um, start out. Let's create the first one at x100, y300. Let's make it team 0. And let's make the unit zero or unit x. Alright. So we're gonna create three units for each team, so I'm gonna create copy this ooh, ooh, two more times. And so we want them to be relatively grouped close together. So I'm gonna just change x value slightly so they end up close together. Um, Alright. So the team values remain the same for all three. And we're gonna change the unit by one depending on whether it be x, y, or z, whether they want to be x, y, or z. So let's copy this whole set of code two more times. So this will be for team one, this will be for team two. Let's change those values right now. Team one, team one, team one, team two, team two, team two. All right, and the units are all set. Now I see change the x, x and y values slightly. I'm going to change it around so that they end up close together. So I'll just, I'll probably fast forward this because you know how to set, you should know how to set x and y. So now, now the script is all done. This will spawn the objects. Let's go into our room. So we want to have their spawner in there so that all of our units will be spawned. And we also want our turn object to be in there so that we can reach terms. So let's test it out. All right, so we got, we got all our units spawned, different colors, different units, perfectly. Remember, this is all the same object. We use the script to make them look different. So it's very handy in turn-based schemes. And then, okay, so now we should be able to, now it shows that it's turn yellow, which means we should be able to operate the yellow ones, and we can. And then we, we, we shouldn't be able to operate these ones because it's yellow's turn. And we cannot. Alright, so if I click on here, now it's red's turn, and I can operate the reds all I want. And click again, green's turn, and I can operate green all I want. 